So, we, <coughs> so very good evening everyone. I am Sahaj Shivastav, currently studying in UCMS Bhairava. So, in this video, like today I am going to like talk about the lumbosacral plexus. So, currently I will tell you why the videos are getting late. So, it is just because like I am on the community health diagnosis field. So, that's why like I am quite busy right now. That's why it is like that. So, I got the time today. So, let's like just... Uh, I will tell you about the lumbosacral plexus. I will give you all the mnemonics that I, that I have made for myself and uh, like all the nerves that are important. So first of all, uh, uh, these are the basics that you should know that from L1 to S3, there's the lumbosacral plexus. The lumbar sac the, uh, from, uh, There are five segments actually, the L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5 and the S1, S2, S3. From where the lumbosacral plexus, the all the nerves that arise so basically what do you like understand by the plexus the, the lumbosacral plexus is that these are the nerves that are going to supply to your um, abdominal like some of the muscles of the abdominal walls and most mostly will supply to the lower limb actually what you call it as the uh, thigh leg and foot so the lumbar plexus is where the anterior are like derived from the anterior rami of nerves so first of all let me start from the first segment first spinal root would be actually the l1 from where two two nerves like let me just first of all mention the let me first of all mention the anterior and the posterior segment anterior and the posterior segment so i will give you a lot of mnemonic in this one cause there are quite a lot of muscles in your lower limb that are actually going to be supplied with the nerves that are going to arise from the lumbosacral plexus so first of all let me write uh, the first one the l1 so from l1 you get actually the two nerves that is the ilioinguinal ilioinguinal and ilio hypogastric so let me uh, make it a bit readable okay so yeah so let me use a darker color first okay so from l1 you will get two nerves the first one is the ilioinguinal the second one is going to be the ilio hypogastric so see i'm like not going to talk about all the muscles like all the muscles and uh, the skin that is supplied by these nerves i'm just going to like mention like the posterior compartment anterior compartment and all because in a short video like in a in this video we can't include everything in the lower limb it is actually a very vast topic so from l1 you get the two nerves ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric and then from l1 and l2 you will get the genitofemoral nerve the genitofemoral nerve and from l1 from l2 and l3 you are going to get the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh so see there's a quite a good mnemonic i made uh, so if you have played any battle royale game you would know what uh, IGL stands for it is actually um, the name of the in-game leader we call it like I used to play some of the battle royale games so see from for I you can learn like I is in Roman number you stands for one so from L1 you will get the ilioinguinal and the ilio hypogastric and then you will get from g like there should be l1 and l2 like we will go the sequence we will go sequence wise l1 and l2 g stand for genitofemoral nerve and the l1 l means l2 and l3 the l here stand for the literal cutaneous nerve of the thigh so see um you have to bear with me because there's a lot of uh, uh, background noise here so yep please bear with me so again writing this mnemonic IGL stand for the ilioinguinal nerve that arises from the L1 
the genitofemoral nerve that is arises from the L1 and L2 and the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh that arises from the L2 and L3 okay so see i would like to like first of all i would like to tell you something that none of the nerves like i am going to mention today none of the nerves are going to be like uh, starting from the l3 so you won't get like any nerve that start from l3 l4 no you will get most of the nerves starting from like l4 or actually l5 so i will tell you in sequence wise so you get this like the first nerve here you got the ilioinguinal e and the iliohypogastric then the genitofemoral nerve and then the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh so moving forward um i as i as i told you that there's none 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 of the like you know that is going to be arise from the l3 so let's move from l4 so let me tell you l4 l5 and like let's let's just for a moment let me clear all of this uh, and then i can show you the main nerves so i i get like you know you have a basic understanding of the first three nerves the ilioinguinal iliohypogastric genitofemoral and the uh, lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh so now moving on the moving to the major nerves category so see from the l2 you will get like uh, first let me write a small mnemonic r p f p and then o a t so that's how i used like i still used to learn it that o stand for obturator a means anterior and t for tibial and then pfp means posterior from posterior you will get the femoral and the uh, peroneal nerve or what you call is the common fibular nerve okay so yep moving uh, forward o a t c o we will get the l2 l3 and l4 this is the obturator nerve so obturator nerve like goes and then it uh, supplies to the adductor muscles which is the medial medial muscles of the like your thigh medial compartment of your thigh and then another group of mo like another group of muscles are supplied by the tibial branch like the posterior of your thigh or the posterior uh, side like the posterior compartment of your leg and all of the like your foot is supplied by the tibial nerve which is actually a branch of the sciatic nerve that i know you like ha you have heard about this nerve a lot of time so that is the sciatic nerve the sciatic nerve like is composed of two thing is composed of two nerves the first one is going to be your tibial nerve the second one is going to be your common fibular or common peroneal nerve so from where the tibial nerve arises tibial nerve arises from the l4 l5 s1 s2 and s3 so this is one of the very big nerve that one of the very thickest nerve this is the tbl nerve so if someone asks you the obturator nerve the uh, root value of obturator nerve this is going to be the root value of obturator nerve and for the tibial nerve l4 l5 s1 s2 and s3 so the tibial nerve is going to supply the posterior compartment of your thigh leg the posterior compartment of your leg and the whole of the foot okay the whole foot i hope like i'm clear please like if you are studying this like please do make notes cause it might help cause like you you won't be going like you won't see this again and again cause it will just generally waste your time so if you are like studying if you are like actually um trying to learn something just please make notes so moving to the posterior mi from posterior mi you get the pfp post in the posterior you will get the femoral and the peroneal common peroneal com you we also call the common peroneal as the common fibular nerve which is the part of the sciatic nerve so first of all the common fi the moving the femoral nerve is going to arise from the l2 l3 l4 similarly like the obturator nerve and the femoral nerve is going to supply the anterior compartment of your thigh all the quadriceps femoris muscle and the sartorius muscle 
and it also supplies to the pectineus muscle the pectineus muscle is actually uh, a, compo- a component of your medial compartment but it is supplied by the femoral nerve so the root value of your femoral nerve is going to be the l2 l3 l4 okay so uh, then moving forward to one of the like one of the one of the important nerves of your leg is that the common fibular or the common peroneal nerve and the root value of the common peroneal or the common fibular nerve is l4 l5 s1 and s2 please like be careful the s3 isn't involved in the common peroneal nerve so how did i learn common fibular or the common peroneal nerve so how did i learn that the s3 is not going to be involved is like the s c the tibia tibia the bone is actually a bigger one a more bulkier one and it is like uh, the weight bearing muscle so it is going to involve a lot of uh, nerve and the tibial nerve is going to supply to uh, more muscles than the common fibular nerve okay so like moving forward and then these are the important nerves of your leg uh, sorry for the like background noise it's like when you are in a resort or in a um what you say hotel these are the things that you have to do that's why the i was like kind of uh, hesitating to make the video so let's move forward let's not waste time in my personal stories common fibular nerve is going to supply to your muscles of your muscles of leg generally the anterior compartment of the leg and the lateral compartment of your leg c um i hope you have a general understanding about the compartment of your leg or um, the compartment of your lower limb if you don't like just give me a few second i will explain it to you okay so okay just like let's 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 make you understand what's uh, what are the compartment so see if i this is your thigh okay let me, this is your thigh for example this is your leg and this is your sole okay so this is your thigh this is like your patella and all so if i cut your thigh like this from the cross sectional from the transverse section i i take okay so see this is the femur and then what i would get is the this is going to be your posterior compartment this is going to be your me- medial compartment and this is going to be your anterior compartment this is your thigh okay so what happens the um, posterior compartment of your thigh consists of the semi tendinosus semi membranosus and the biceps all the hamstring muscles okay in which uh, like biceps femoris one of the head of biceps femoris is actually called the false hamstring i will come to it like in future videos cause see no everything is we can't include in just one video so the medial compartment is also known as the adductor compartment we will get adductor magnus brevis longus the gracilis muscle the gracilis muscle and actually and also the pectineus muscle the pectineus muscle all of these muscles are supplied by the obturator nerve except for the pectineus it is supplied by the femoral nerve even after being into the medial compartment so the anterior compartment has actually two big muscle one is the sartorius which is also the longest muscle of your leg and the second one is going to be your quadriceps femoris that consists of all the vastus muscle you know vastus lateralis vastus intermedius and vastus um, medialis then the rectus femoris muscle so on a random fact i will tell you the um, patella the sesam this the, that's a sesamoid bone that is going to be ossified into one of your tendons of the rectus femoris muscle or the quadriceps femoris like if there's uh, if there's a mcq and you see like there are two option in which of the following tendon in which of the following tendon does the patella bone ossifies that's one one answer that can be the rectus femoris if it is not given then you can go for the quadriceps femoris muscle so 
and then see posterior compartment is majorly supplied by the tibial nerve see all of the posterior compartment muscle is going to be supplied by the tibial nerve be it the thigh be it the leg okay so sciatic nerve sciatic nerve is divided into tibial and the common peroneal or the common fibular nerve okay so the tibial nerve is going to supply all of the muscle of your posterior compartment be it the thigh be it the leg and all of the your foot is going to be supplied by the tibial nerve and its branches like the sural nerve and the middle sorry medial calcaneal branch all of this is going to supply the foot okay the tibial tibial nerve is going to supply posterior compartment of everything okay posterior compartment okay the, and the common peroneal nerve further divides into two the deep peroneal and the superficial peroneal the deep peroneal nerve is going to supply c i will like just i will make uh, i will try to explain you here this is your leg so we got the anti we have got the anterior medial and posterior compartment in the thigh but if we take a cross section of your leg we will not get the medial we will actually this is your tibia so we will get the posterior compartment we will get the anterior compartment and we will get the lateral compartment there's no medial compartment in your leg compartment is actually just like the group of muscle there's some uh, some uh, fascia or some ten just uh, what you say it some connective tissue separating it so anterior the anterior compartment of your leg is going to be supplied by the deep peroneal nerve the deep peroneal nerve is actually a branch of your common peroneal nerve which is again a branch of your sciatic nerve and the lateral is going to be supplied by the superficial peroneal nerve the posterior compartment is going to be supplied as i told you already tibial tibial branch of your sciatic nerve okay so i have given you a basic understanding of your leg and the whole of your foot is going to be supplied by again the tibial nerve only so let's move forward and like sh complete the remaining things so we have completed the genitofemoral nerve again remembering remembering the igl mnemonic i told you i for ilio inguinal ilio hypogastric is that is going to be just originating from the l1 the g stand for the genitofemoral nerve that is going to be from the l1 and l2 the lateral cutaneous is going to be originating from the l2 and l3 the femoral nerve again i told you the mnemonic o a t and p f p the femoral nerve is going to be apply going to be arising from the l2 l3 and l4 of your um the posterior rami the obturator nerve again remembering the mnemonic o a t it is same as the femoral nerve but it is arising from the anterior compartment this is from the posterior anterior sir compartment i said it is actually the rami the tibial nerve tibial nerve is going to arise from your l4 to s3 l4 l5 s1 s2 and s3 the common peroneal is going to arise from l4 to the s2 it won't include the s3 cause tibial i remembering again how i told you tibia is the bigger bone so it will going to be including all the uh what you say it all all the nerves all the rami all the spinal compartment so sciatic nerve is actually nothing but the combination of these two nerves so from l4 to s3 it will all include also the femoral sorry the femoral fibular branch so the mnemonic i as i told you o a t obturator and tibial actually arise from the anterior rami and it is going to be and the common peroneal is going to be arising from the posterior one the sciatic nerve is from l4 to s3 so let me again tell you something a very good story see for superior gluteal nerve okay for the superior gluteal nerve um it is going to arise be arising from the l4 l5 and s1 and the inferior gluteal nerve 
is going to arise from the L5, S1, S2. So the superior, okay, the superior comes first. So that's why that L4. See, this is a very foolish and the very childish way, but that's how I like uh, actually learnt it. So superior comes first. So that's why the L4. See, if someone is superior, he will he wants to like go first and like be the topper whatever you call it so l4 l5 f and s1 and on the other hand the inferior gluteal nerve is going to be arising from the l5 s1 and s2 so the muscle supplied by the superior gluteal nerve is going to be the gluteus max minimus and gluteus medius again a very again an exception arises the tensor fascia latte is also supplied by the superior gluteal nerve and inferior gluteal nerve is supplied by your eh, sorry the inferior gluteal nerve supplies your gluteus maximus muscle so i know you don't uh, forget this particular muscle this is one of your largest muscle of your body so if you actually have an injury in the superior gluteal muscle uh, there's a very peculiar sign that you see that's the trendelen trendelen berg sign don't confuse it with the trendelen berg test the trendelen berg test is actually um, the test for the valves of the greater saphenous vein don't confuse it with that the trendelenburg sign is for the working of your two muscle that's the main main uh, abductors of your hip joint that's the gluteus minimus and the gluteus medius muscle and moving forward so let me just excuse me <coughs> sorry 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 okay the superior gluteal nerve is arising from the l4 l5 and s1 and the inferior gluteal nerve l5 s1 and s2 so i hope i just like made you clear about it the nerve to obturator internus and the nerve to quadratus femoris see again i will tell you a story like just bear with me for a few seconds I, it will be like clear most of your things so obturator internus there's a particular mnemonic that i made ios so i'm using an ipad so that's why <laughs> they're not flexing okay ios okay for inferior gluteal nerve like the same as the inferior gluteal nerve the root value is going to be the for the obturator as the superior gluteal nerve the same is going to be the nerve to obturator internus and the same as the superior gluteal nerve the root value is going to be the same for the nerve to quadratus femoris so remembering again what was the um, what was the root value for the inferior gluteal nerve as i told you l5 s1 s2 it comes late that why it doesn't get the l4 one the, inferior, the superior gluteal nerve had the l4 l5 s1 so the nerve to obturator internus will have the l4 l5 s1 and the nerve to obturator internus is going to have the same root value as the l5 s1 s2 which is of the inferior gluteal nerve so let's let us write it there then and there only remembering the um, mnemonic again ios and q so the inferior the obturator nerve to obturator internus has the root value l5 s1 and s2 same as the inferior gluteal nerve and the nerve to quadratus femoris has the same root value as the superior gluteal nerve so i hope i didn't got you confused there okay this is moving forward moving forward so as I told you here, moving forward, let me again recap, recapitulate everything from the starting. So I hope this makes it clear. As I told you, the first the first thing as I, that I told you was the IGL mnemonic. 
I G L for I the Roman number one that's for L1 you will get the ilio inguinal and the ilio hypogastric for G L1 L2 like we are going sequentially so the genitor femoral nerve will have L1 and L2 for L that's the lateral cutaneous nerve of your thigh is going to be the L2 and L3 L1 L1 L2 L2 and L3 so this is going to be the first mnemonic here as moving forward as I told you the femoral nerve the first two, two mnemonics OAT and the femoral nerve for the PFP that is the posterior MI femoral nerve and obturator nerve are going to be the same the difference is going to be the um, origin the origin of uh, obturator nerve is going to be anterior rami the origin of the femoral nerve is going to be the posterior rami the the root value is going to be the same for both moving uh, again forward sciatic nerve is going to consist of two nerve that's the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve the tibial nerve is going to have the branches from L4 to S3. The common peroneal is going to have the branches from L4 to S2. Again telling you, tibial nerve, the tibial, the tibia bone is a bigger one and the tibial nerve is going to supply more muscles. That's why it is going to have the more uh, origins. Okay, the inferior gluteal nerve. Okay. The inferior gluteal nerve to the inferior gluteal nerve and the superior gluteal nerve superior gluteal nerve comes first so the l4 l5 and s1 and inferior gluteal nerve come late too so that's why l5 s1 and s2 uh, i'm not touching this pudinal nerve but if you want to you can memorize it that is s2 s3 and s4 so this is the tbl l4 to s3 and l4 to s2 Again, the origin is going to be the different, remembering the mnemonic O, A, T, O, T. So, the anterior origin is going to be for tibia and obturator nerve and PFP, that's the uh, posterior, posterior origin is going to be for the femoral and the peroneal, also called as the fibular nerve. These both are the branches of sciatic nerve only. So, sometimes the sciatic nerve divides here or sometimes it also divides here only into its respective branches that is the tibial and the common femoral common peroneal nerve again moving forward so let me test your knowledge here i hope you are catching it like what i'm telling i know i am i like speak a bit uh, faster so please like bear with me for some more minutes gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus are supplied by the in or the superior no the superior one okay i was testing you ha 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 you were writing huh you were writing the inferior no that's the superior gluteal nerve superior gluteal nerve superior gluteal nerve that is going to arise from the l4 l5 and s1 and if you get a damage like if you damage your superior gluteal nerve you will have a lurching gait that is going to be demonstrated by the sign known as the trendelen berg sign okay so again the gluteus maximus inferior gluteal nerve it comes late that's why the l5 s1 and at the s2 the tensor fascia latte the femoral nerve femoral nerve that is going to be from the l2 l3 and l4 also that's from the posterior rami moving forward moving forward okay so if you don't uh, like know these muscles these are actually the posterior compartment of your thigh the posterior as i told you earlier all of the muscle of your posterior compartment of your thigh leg or even your foot the whole of the foot is going to be from the tibial branch only and 
also and sometimes like uh, you can correlate it with the radial nerve from which is in your uh, upper limb actually all the posterior compartment of your upper upper limb is supplied by the like all the muscles of your posterior compartment of your hand the is supplied by the tibial nerve only okay uh, like the triceps femoris and all the extensor muscle of your hand so you can relate correlate the radial nerve is same as the like a tibial nerve both are going to take care of the posterior compartment of their respective limb the semi membranosus semi tendinosus and also the short head of biceps femoris is going to be taken care by the tibial nerve only ah uh, okay let let ah uh, okay also the long long head of biceps femoris so there's actually a very controversial thing i'll like to tell you here the mm, what you said just leave it i will tell you that the one of the head of your the biceps femoris is supplied by the common fibular nerve that's that is like written in the uh, gray's anatomy so i will tell you in the later videos the quadratus femoris is supplied by the nerve to quadratus femoris how easy right quadratus femoris again remember the mnemonic i o s q q means the nerve to quadratus femoris is same as the superior gluteal nerve the superior gluteal nerve had the l4 l5 and s1 the root value was so now you know the root value of the nerve supplying the quadratus femoris moving forward see this is the posterior of your leg the gastrocnemius or the both uh, the medial and the lateral the lateral and the medial side uh, like head and the plantaris muscle the soleus muscle everything see if you like come up with a question like what is the nerve supplying to the posterior compartment of this and that remember for the upper limb it is going to be the radial nerve only and for the lower limb it is going to be the tibial nerve which is the branch of sciatic nerve so sometimes like if you don't remember it if it was the peroneal or the tibial just write the sciatic nerve it will be fine okay i guess uh, i guess that would be all yep i guess i guess so i don't have the pictures of the anterior compartment of your thigh all the muscles the quadriceps femoris and sartorius and the of your leg those are going to be like completed in your like upcoming videos these these things that i have told you see all these thing that i have told you should be in your mind okay so i hope uh, you are clear about it uh, some of the some of the very important mnemonics i have told you i hope you had make like enough notes so that would be like all from my side for today and please like <laughs> my finals are coming so i hope i will make some study with me type of videos and for that okay and for that time thank you and have a good day